Everybody, welcome back to this episode of Think Business Live. Uh, looking forward to talking to author Ian Weinberg. Ian, it's great to uh, have you on the show today. We're going to dive into the book you wrote, which I love, um, Invest Early to Grow Your Wealth. You know, Think Community, we talk a lot on this show about um, keeping things simple. And sometimes, you know, breaking it down to the simple can be can be very, very difficult and getting it to that level where people can understand and receive and digest um, is takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of thoughts. Um, Ian, in your book, Invest Early to Grow Your Wealth, I think you you did a phenomenal job of that, taking complex things um, and really making them easy uh, to digest. And uh, so I want to dive into that. So um, you know, having written a book, sometimes people ask me, a lot of times people ask me, you know, um, you know, oh, they'll, well, they'll say to me, hey, hey I've, I've always wanted to write a book, uh, but I never have. And so what was the process you went through? So I want to really start there. What was, you know, when what what was the process? Where did the idea come from to write your book? And again, it can be found on Amazon, invest early to grow your wealth. What, take us through kind of that. What was the... What was the process? Um, I'd start, I'd want to start by saying um, thank you for the compliment. And it kind of started during COVID. You know, I've always been, my dad's always been telling me about investing. I was never very interested, but I had all this free time, you know, everyone's stuck inside. I'm in my house and I'm playing enough video games. I'm like, I, I have to do something productive because there was no school at the time, like right yeah. when COVID hit. And I started to read into investing books and like watch investing TV, uh, CNBC and all these business channels. And there's something that hit me as I started to learn more. And I got like, I started to love it and read and read, and read, but particularly about the teenage centered investing books, they're all written by adults. And I was a bit curious why that was, because here I am, I'm a teen and I'm reading this book and it's targeted toward a teen audience, but it's written by an adult. And that thought just went away over time. And it was like 2021 summer, my so uh, fresh, I'm going into my sophomore year, summer of 2021. And I was at the pool and I was reading over Twitter and I saw a fact that there are really fewer younger investors than ever. And that there's like a lot of people who gamble, investing, like do investing and gambling as the same thing. And there are fewer real younger investors than ever. And the idea about the investing book about how the adults were writing it for teens just came back into my head. And at that moment I got the idea, why don't I write a book? And, you know, at first I was like, Oh, I can't do that. And I, I brought the idea up to my parents and they're like, I mean, everyone was a bit skeptical at first. And I started to think about it over time and I got more in like more in love with it because I tend to like, like things more if I think about it and work on it. So I yeah. started to, plan it out. My parents are like, write out a plan, do some studying and do some work on it. And, you know, I was skeptical because I'm like, how, when am I going to be able to write this book? And it wasn't as hard as I actually thought. So the main part, the main, the hardest part for me was planning it all out. You had to like, yeah. I had to sit inside, um, like really focus and, but I, I love the topic. So it was something that I could easily just type out, but organizational, I, started by typing chapter summer like parts of chapters that I want to touch on so I'd want to touch on investing the stock market companies and all that I would start by typing out ideas stuff I wanted like very unorganized at first which was a bit hard for me because I like organization but then as I had everything out and I had everything I want to talk about the book just started to write itself and eventually um, I finished wait, it. let's talk about that wait I want to pause you I want to pause you for that because um, I, I, I love, I love that story. Thanks for kind of walking everybody through it. But I found the same thing when I, when I wrote my book many years ago, I, I made an outline. And then once I started writing the book kind of takes a life of its own. So I just kind of dive into that because I think there it's, it's <clears throat> writing a book is not a perfect science. And, and I kind of went through the same thing you did, right? Organized a bunch of stuff, tried to organize it, got it into some type of priority but then as I began to sit down and, and, and at my computer, the book takes a life of its own. And so just kind of explain that, because for those of you think community who are thinking about writing a book on, on any topic, when I talk to a lot of authors on, on the show and 
everybody kind of has the same story where it becomes kind of, it just kind of, it just kind of starts writing itself a little bit. So just kind of talk about that for those of you who are worried that it has to be perfect when you start, it really doesn't. Yeah, it, it definitely was not perfect when I started. You make a great point. I was sitting there. There'd be times I didn't want to do it at the beginning. It was unorganized and everything. And once I knew, planned everything out, knew what I wanted to talk about, knew what I wanted to write, I would just sit there and type for hours. I mean, this was a summer when I, I was writing it and I, I could just sit inside for hours and type and like my parents would have to beg me to go outside and hang out with friends and stuff. I was just so engaged. Like if you really love something like I like investing, it's easy to type out and it's, it's not going to be a simple process. I, um, I had difficulties in the way, but I've overcome it just like any author will. It's, um, it's a fun were, process that you learn a lot. Your, yeah. What were your biggest difficulties and how'd you overcome them? Um, my biggest difficulties, I would say, were like the time put into it. You know, you want your book published and you want it to be done and you always want the end goal, but you have to like love what you're doing. You have to like the process to get to that end goal because now that I've done everything and it's like all completed, it feels much better than if I was just publish it right away without doing any work. I mean, the work really, you need to love writing it and you need to enjoy that, which I, I ended up liking. And I would say one more difficulty was like dealing with it's summertime and, you know, going out and hanging out with the friends because I had to give up um, a good amount of time to write the book in the deadline I was hoping to. And I actually finished it in that deadline. But uh, I became a bit like came, didn't go out often. I was a bit unsocial during the summer as I was trying to accomplish my goal. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes uh, there's there's consequences to it, but Sometimes short-term pain has really good long-term gain. Um, you know, think community, if you are thinking about writing a book, what I found beneficial, and it sounds like you did too, Ian, is I kind of picked a time every day. For me, it was nine o'clock at night. I would write every, um, typically every Monday through Thursday um, at nine o'clock. And I would write about a thousand, I think if I remember correctly, like a thousand to 1500 words, like give or take. Um, and so- you know, if you set kind of goals like that, it can be very small. If you, you know, you can do a hundred words, but if you have a book in you, you just got to, to your point, Ian, you got to just sit down and start writing. How did you feel when you were done with the book? You know, when I finished my book, it was, I was kind of, I was, I was really excited. I was really happy, but I was also a little bit sad. I, I had invested so much time and energy into not only the book, but the characters in the book and the story of the book. It was almost, um, I missed, I missed the writing when I was done. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I felt like it was like something I was invested in kind of like a job to me yeah. during the summer because I'd be spending this whole time inside doing this. And then when I finished, it was like, Oh, what else can I do? Because I, I always want to work, work, work. And I'm sitting here done and this book's here. And then, I mean, obviously, as you know, there's a lot of back end stuff that you have to do before you publish. So it's right. like, you're sitting and waiting and you just get antsy. Um, so I just tried to do what I could. Like um, my aunt actually helped me with the photographs in the book. So I was reaching out to her, reaching out. I'm an intern at the Youth Tank Detroit. So I made a partnership with them and I, I did what I could to help advance the book in a non-writing way. Yeah. So let's talk about this. The, the, the visuals of the book uh, by your aunt are great. And the profits of the book are being donated to Youth Tank Detroit, a nonprofit startup incubator for high school students, uh, uh, high school student led businesses in Detroit. So um, it's great. Why did you decide um, as you were finalizing the book to donate the profits versus take some of the profits? Uh -huh. Well, my main goal for writing the book was to help people understand investing because I really saw the results of investing in my portfolio. Over time, even if the market fluctuates, you're going to make a very good return if you invest instead of spending money. Um, and as it was targeted to a teen audience and I'm targeting it to these people, I really want to help people by doing this. So I thought that the money should go to a good source. And when researching, I found Youth Tank Detroit and ended up becoming an intern there and seeing how beneficial it is for people's lives. And it just meant a lot to me. So I thought that it was the best thing I could do with the money. And um, I have no regrets about doing that. Good, good. Um, um, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, 
that you're you're going down that path. And uh, I think only great things will come from 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 it. Uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways, when you write a book, you don't necessarily make money writing a book. You make money in other ways, the speaking, the, you know, things of that nature. Um, so your Aunt Jackie did all the illustrations. The book is 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 great. Uh, her graphic design work can be found at supergirlgurl.com. OK, I just want to give her a little bit of props. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so so let's talk. Let's kind of dive into the book. Right. So the book is divided into multiple parts. I just want to kind of go over a quick summary for those of you who are interested in buying it on Amazon. Part one is the principles of investing in compounding. Part two, ways to invest to beat inflation and grow your wealth. Part three, a trip down Wall Street. Uh, part four, buying, selling and trading. Uh, step five, taxes and retirement accounts. Uh, uh, part six, funds. Part, se uh, part seven, uh, stock sectors. And part eight, more terms and concepts to understand. OK, so we may not get into every piece because we want to leave some interest for people to actually buy the book. But I can tell you, I think community, the book does a great job of of defining things in a very easily digestible way. Let's start with part one and the principles of investing and compounding. Um, I love talking about compounding. I'm a business coach, but I kind of talk about compounding in, in a lot of different ways because Positive habits compound in a positive way and negative habits compound in a negative way. And an example I use sometimes is I'll say to people, would you take a penny that doubles every day to be paid out on the 31st day or would you take a million dollars today? And many people, I'll, I'll give everyone a kind of a second to think about it, but many people will say, I'll take a million bucks today. But a million, a penny that doubles every single day on day 27 is 671,000 and on day 31, it's 10.7 million. And so a lot of that um, was echoed. And I loved your coffee example of what you spend versus what you invest. When I was living with my now wife, but we were dating at the time um, in Birmingham 20 some years ago, we realized that we were going to Starbucks once or twice a day and spending thousands of dollars on latte. So I, I loved this example. And then we actually cut back with this kind of in mind. So talk a little bit about um, part one. So the main goal of part one, as is the book, to get like you interested in investing and understanding things you need to know. So the investing and compounding part was meant to like get people to understand investing and what compounding is, because as you said, it, it relates to everything in life. If you put your money somewhere and invest and you keep it there, it's going to compound. And over time, you're going to be rewarded, just like if you're doing like a good thing every day and you're doing good habits, it's going to be um, rewarded. So the main goal of that part was just to introduce concepts that people need to know. And I would like to add on that, as I said, the book is meant to be a starter and get you interested in investing, not tell you everything you need to know, strategies on how to invest or anything like that. So you'll become interested in investing and continue to research and look into it. Yeah. You know, there's um, there was an article in 2008 that said is, uh, um, it was in, I can't remember where, uh, it was in the Atlantic and it was called, is Google making us stupid? So this was written in 2008. And what it talked about was that um, technology is actually rewiring our brain to move us away from instant gratification, excuse me, move us away from delayed gratification to wanting instant gratification. So fast forward from 2008 when that was written to 2023, um, add in COVID, and, 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 and different generations wanting more instant gratification. What, as you were writing this or just your, your guidance and your advice, what do you say to someone when it comes to being patient and, and kind of being patient with delayed gratification? Because that's how the compounding works. Mm -hmm. I would echo your example about the penny and the million dollars. I mean, a lot of people will want the money right away. Um, but I, I would say like in a lot of people I know are con big time consumers. I mean, you, they spend money when they get it. And I feel like it's definitely hard when you have this great advertising and marketing that we have in the world right now. But I would say that the best thing you could do is plan, like make a budget. If you have a job, like say, say a certain amount you're going to save each month and um, like work on that don't don't go over don't go and in many cases try and go under if you make a plan and you write it down 
and you have a goal and you tell people about it, you're going to be more inclined to do it than if you just have it in your head. I mean, the delayed gratification part of it, if you think about it, you can search up all these things online. You can see the results of investing a certain amount. It's really, you can think about it. You can have a uh, gratification right now, which is like down here, or you can wait and have a better gratification in the future. If you just yeah. let time go on. Yeah. Well said. Well said. I want to go back because, you know, you, you talked about your dad's telling you, I should say, you know, as we record this March, uh, you know, in, in March of 2023, you're a junior at Seaholm high school. And so three years ago when you're in, we're, we're in COVID, um, your, your dad's suggesting that you invest and, you know, and you're saying, eh, I'm not really interested. You start doing research, you find a passion in it. Um, and now you start really kind of diving in CNBC, et cetera, et cetera. In your book, you talk about Warren Buffett a, a little bit as the best investor ever, ever. So what did you, what did you learn from researching him and some of the greats? Um, from Warren Buffett, I learned about like dividend investing, where if you put money and you're going to get cash flow, I mean, the company's earning this money and they're going to pay it out to you as a shareholder. Obviously, Berkshire doesn't pay a dividend. They do buybacks, but the companies that Berkshire owns, a lot of them are dividend payers like Coke and stuff. And over time, that just adds on to compounding. So if you own the stock and you get, say, 10% or, I mean, if the stock goes down, say, 5%, you it pays out a 4% dividend. You're only down 1%, where if it was a normal stock, you'd be down 5 And over time, if you keep that money being reinvested, it just grows and it's like a snowball effect over time the money just keeps on growing and from peter lynch i, I learned a lot about that evaluating companies and stuff i mean there's a lot of great resources and great investors that i i've learned from and a lot of great books that you can learn from as well yeah if you could ask warren buffett any question what would it be um <laughs> why did you um why did you buy um the snowflake ipo in um 2020 <laughs> out of any IPO ever. All right, good. I like that. I think I would ask him, I think I would ask him, when you're the most powerful man in the room, what's the responsibility? <laughs> That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about, you know, so we mentioned we're talking, you know, it's 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 March 2023. Uh, we are um, experiencing inflation. We're experiencing recession. Um, banks are getting bailed out, et cetera, et cetera. And in part two, you're talking about ways to invest to beat inflation and grow your wealth. And so what did you, what did you learn and what can you share on, on this chapter? So I, during the time I was writing this, I didn't really know much about inflation. I mean, over time of researching, I found out about it, but Right now, it's especially important that you need to invest because you have inflation at these high rates that they've been the past year and a half, two years, six plus percent, that your money's just getting killed. I mean, you look at egg prices or anything, like if you're holding on to money, when you buy something next year, it's not going to be, it's going to be more expensive and you need to fight against that by investing, even like bonds or um cds any any type of investment that's not like gambling is a, a safe thing to do I and mean, you can get five percent right now on bonds which is a um, very good return but um i would say that just over time your buying power is going to be killed if you don't invest and it's important that even if you're want to spend the money that you save you you have to invest it there's no reason to keep it sitting in a bank account or a checking account a savings account anything like that because you could be earning a better return from bonds and stocks cds or any other investment yeah all right good let's let's uh let's fast forward a little bit to part five when you talk about and kind of kind of move from what you're talking about just now to taxes and retirement right so here we're talking about investing young for all of the, you know, the under 20 year olds or 20 year olds or 30 year olds who are on the uh, are on the phone. And now we're talking about taxes and retirement. One of the things I always found interesting, and I'm, and this isn't said with any judgment, is how many people don't max out their 401ks when they are young, because, you know, we're talking about compounding those compound and, you know, you wake up 20, 30 years later and those turn into significant dollars. You know, so it, it, even with the markets going up and down, don't quote me on this, but I think I think there is kind of like usually an average throughout the decade of like nine something percent. 
And so um, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. I just can't remember off the top of my head. But but talk a little bit about what you learned and what you're sharing about taxes and retirement accounts. So I've learned that, I mean, you have to pay taxes on everything and there's um, no way to really get out of it, but you can harness these investing accounts. I mean, investing is great in a normal account, but if you can invest for your retirement with like a specific rules and stuff, and if you have a job and you're eligible, there's no reason why you should not put the money into one of these accounts because you can get tax advantages. I mean, I feel that um, a lot of companies from what I've heard don't tell people about it and people are uninformed and never start. And then when they get older, they realize, oh, I could have been doing this. And they're like, oh, I wish someone would have told me that. And I just want to um, alert my readers about this. And if it, I'd rather them, if they had a job, put it into one of those uh, tax accounts that can help them save money from taxes and compound than a normal account. Nice. Good. I love it. I want to talk about learning. You know, you, you mentioned a couple of things of things that you didn't know about and then you learned and then, you know, you didn't know and you found your passion. What did you learn about learning? From the book? Just from just doing all the studying, like what did you learn about researching and studying and what did you learn about learning and how you learn? Um, I would say that I learned, I, I learned that if you work hard, you can achieve anything. I mean, my dad's always been telling me that as a kid. And I'm like, oh, these people, you put in so much time in schoolwork, you get the assignment done and that's it. But if you're really passionate and you have like a big project, it's more than that. If you put hours like I did into this and you did for your book, um, it'll all pay off. And you can always find resources. I mean, there shouldn't be excuses in life. There are times I didn't want to write. There were times that... I wish I could be doing something else, but I had this goal in my heart and I wasn't going to let it go because I had an excuse in my head. And I found that there's all these resources and I'm lucky enough to have them yeah. that I should just keep on working. Yeah. You know, discipline, um, you know, kudos to you on the discipline on, on what you um, what you mapped out, what you planned out and the discipline of which I think is the differentiator for for any business person, any author, anybody is, is how you execute. And so, uh, you know, congrats on your really impeccable execution. Um, talk to me about your second book. Is there a second book in your um, I've been asked that a few times and, you know, I would consider writing one that goes over more topics. Um, we'll have to see how this book goes. Um, I mean, I would love to write one in the future. I just don't know how soon it would be. And I'm getting older where it's like I'm losing the appeal because I, my main goal of this book was to be relatable to younger people because yeah. of the knowledge and or most people think of investors as being older and like not relatable. And my real goal was that. So I would hope that more young people would add on. And I actually had ideas of starting like a teenage um, – or young like website where people could submit articles about stocks and investments and stuff because uh, there's other resources, but there's not much by people who can like relate. You can relate to because if you're interested in swimming or a sport, you can go find articles or YouTube videos from people relatable, but there's not much from like my, my age range. Your generation. Well, what you, what you, your, your story, your book, um, again, I know I said this earlier, but the way that you laid it out and articulated it, it's really great. It's really, really impressive. You know, think community. Um, my parents always, always raised me that there's something I can always learn from somebody older and younger. Um, I'm 50. You are, how old are you, Ian? 17. You know, you're 17. And I mean, I'm learning, I learned a lot from your book. Um, and it was, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I was so impressed. Um, I really suggest that anybody who's interested at least go to Amazon and check it out. Uh, but let's do a quick speed round first, Ian. You ready? Yeah. Okay. What are uh, what's a book that's had the biggest impact on you as you were doing your studies? That's a great question. Um, there's a lot of them. I like Thinking Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. I like. What else? Gosh, what's the there's a Peter Lynch book that I really like. Um, I forgot the name of it, but that's my favorite investing yeah. book. I highly recommend it. Well, Think and Grow Rich is one of my all time favorites too. I mean, it really is Napoleon Hill is such a great read. 
Uh, yeah. Best piece of best piece of wisdom. You mentioned a lot of things that your your dad shared with you, but best piece of wisdom you've ever received. Um, I'd also say it's from my dad. It was um, work hard, and if you dream big, you can achieve anything. Because at first, I thought this was just like oh, an idea. I'm gonna let it go. But if you hold yourself to your goal and you write it down, and you work, and you don't make excuses for yourself, you can achieve it. And um, that's what I what I learned from this process, and it will definitely be important to my future. And I hope many of your guys. It's great. Finish this sentence, Ian. Uh, one th the, the one thing that everybody can do to take the first step to start investing early is? Saving. All right. Good. Um, <clears throat> and tell everybody where they can connect with you and uh, buy the book. Um, I'm on Instagram, Ian Weinberg, um, MVP. And I'm also on LinkedIn as well, Ian Weinberg. And then on Amazon, um, Investor Lead to Grow Your Wealth. I'm on there and then i can my email is ianweinberg12 at gmail.com i love it um ian i can't thank you enough you know i i'm a business coach i grow um i grow companies i grow people from solopreneurs to fortune companies salespeople, managers owners c-level execs all over the world and I, lo I love what i do so when i talk to somebody who's passionate um i love it and 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 i what i love to do is work with successful people who are stuck and get them unstuck which is one of the reasons I love this podcast. I get to have guests like you on here, Ian, um, talking about your journey, talking about your book, Invest Early to Grow Your Wealth, to help people who are listening of any age get unstuck. And hopefully this inspired Think Community, this inspired you to start writing a book, start bringing your book to life, start talking about it, putting it in on paper. Um, you don't have to do it in a week. You don't have to do it in a year. You can do it in two years, whatever time frame or cadence works but um you know ian your 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 kind of through line of discipline and commitments and finding something that you're passionate about and you're really the anchor and the bedrock core of being relatable and helping people uh, has come through in a very very strong way so i applaud you i'm proud of what you've accomplished i'm and i'm excited and looking forward to watching what you do through the next many, many decades, because I'm sure it will be um, and continually be great. In community, uh, you can buy Ian's book at Amazon, Invest Early to Grow Your Wealth. Uh, if you need anything from me, you can uh, connect with me at johndwaskin.com. Ian, any last thoughts? Um, I'd like to thank everyone for listening, and I'd like to thank you for having me on your podcast. It was a great experience. Yeah, it was great. You did great. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you, community. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thanks.